and welcome to Exchange for Media. Wish you all a very, very happy new year. Today, I have a very, very special guest with me. Uh, Nina is very special to us, not just because she heads uh, Hindi uh, Mass Entertainment and Kids TV Network at YCOM 18 and the kind of uh, shows she has launched and the work she does. She's also special because she is very difficult to catch hold of. And finally, in uh, 2021, I am starting on a very good note that I have uh, Nina with me today. Welcome to the show, Nina. Thank you so much, Nazia. Thank you for your kind words and wish you and uh, everybody out there a very safe and a very fulfilling 2021. So, Nina, before we uh, start with the formal interview and I uh, ask you questions, I just, uh, you know, 2020 was a very unpredictable year for all of us. There was so much uncertainty around. But, you know, if I talk of YCOM 18, this uncertainty started almost in 2019 when there were so many talks of you know the, uh, the deal happening and not happening and uh, uh, many of your senior colleagues uh, moved out Raj moved out then uh, later Sudhanshu left you had a new boss to work with how has it been for you in last two years uh, you know so I think that uh, having been in the industry and in my career which is now spanning over 25 years uh, there is nothing that, you know, uh, is not uh, expected. And therefore, uh, as a professional, I believe that it is about embracing that what comes your way. And it is about uh, overcoming challenges and difficulties, learning from the mistakes you make and moving on. So to me, uh, and I've been at Viacom 18 now for 14 years. And I have seen and worked with four bosses. Uh, having said that, uh, it's been a fantastic ride for me personally and professionally. It has been very, very fulfilling, enriching, and uh, you know, very, very satisfying. Uh, so I would, you know, give a lot of gratitude to Viacom 18 for that. Uh, but for the last two years, I think when everything changes around you. The one thing that has remained constant with me and I think with our organization is our promise to our viewers for non-stop world-class entertainment. And I think that's been our DNA uh, ever since I remember. And uh, we've stayed true to that promise uh, ever since across all the Viacom 18 brands. And I think over the last two years, our focus continues to be that our brands continue to cater to the audiences, to engage with them, to connect with them, and to keep our promise of keeping them entertained at all times. And this could not have been more true uh, in 2020, where we really needed to be, you know, uh, so true to our promise, even more so, because we were all uh, deprived of our, you know, basic rights of and you know we're, we're really in a emotional upheaval if i were to talk so and we were really very happy to say that all the viacom 18 brands and whether that was colors or cineplex or nickelodeon or any of our brands were out there uh, entertaining and ensuring that we were there for our audiences and viewers when they needed us so yes a lot has changed in the last two years uh, you do see a lot of people who go and come in but uh, organizations continue, brands are evergreen, and our promise to our viewers is, uh, is, is always true to what we stand for. So now talking uh, solely of pandemic, you know, how did uh, YCOM 18's Hindi and uh, Kids Cluster under you uh, cope with the pandemic and its after effects on the business? Well, so, uh, you know, when we started in March, and I'll take uh, every genre differently because each genre behaves differently. Uh, when we started off and realized that there was a lockdown in March, we didn't realize that it was going to be so long term. Uh, but from a kid's genre perspective, I can tell you that by the time March came, we were already preparing for a big summer uh, yeah. from a kid's perspective. And so when the lockdown happened, uh, the least affected genre to my mind was the kid's genre. And we were out there ready to entertain uh, our little kids who and families, of course, who were with new stories, new characters, new episodes, new movies, new contests. So Nickelodeon and Sonic and Nick Jr. and all our brands were ready 
with all the new content out there to engage with kids. And I'm truly happy for that uh, because what happened was that when it comes to kids, I think they were really deprived of two very big things in their lives, which is school and friends. And I think, uh, you know, there being uh, in a vacation time where they couldn't step out of homes was very critical for us to be there for them. So as a responsible broadcaster, we were there with all the new content. And I'll just continue as the lockdown continued uh, we continue to churn and provide new content and new fresh episodes to kids because we were, as an animation industry and all of us have animated content, it's a pipeline that has been running over a very long period, right? So it's not something we do overnight. And therefore we were ready with a pipeline that we have invested in in the previous years. And we, were, we make almost 100 to 150 hours of content, fresh content every year. We really had a, a fantastic 2020 because we actually launched our ninth and 10th local IP, 10th IP in 10 years with Ting Tong and Pinaki and Happy the Booth Bandhus, which happened very recently in the Diwali quarter. So we really, uh, we were out there with the kids, entertaining them with our, of course, evergreen properties of Rudra, Shiva, Motupatlu, Golmal, and then we launched two new properties. So we were out there entertaining kids. And what we really realized in the kids category also was that we had a whole lot of enhanced co-viewing and family viewing. And, uh, you know, we had people and families watching all our brands and all our new shows. So I think the, the kids brand and the kids genre and franchise continued to gallop. And very happy to say that Nickelodeon continued to be the number one channel seventh year consecutively so and as a franchise as well we lead the the genre with a 32 percent market share with disney and turner following us so very happy that we were in a good space with original content the story of course GEC. Was, yeah so the story wasn't of course the same at gc which is the which colors where we of course all of us ran out of original content and uh you know uh uh, uh, shoots were suspended for a while, but staying true to our promise of wanting to connect and engage and entertain our audiences, we looked into our libraries, we looked into external libraries to ensure that we continue to, to entertain. And we really put out there Mahabharat, we had Om Namah Shivai. We also looked into our own libraries and brought back this whole nostalgic feeling of, you know, with shows like Balika Vadu, with shows like Na Na Is Des Lado, uh, Sasural Simarka, and audiences seem to take a, you know, a trip back into nostalgia and started enjoying content. Uh, we also actually, uh, you know, tried some innovative stuff with uh, our characters and artists at home. And we put out a, a show called Hum Tum and Quarantine, which was really done from the home to ensure that we have some newness on the channel as well. As soon as, uh, you know, opened up, uh, Colors was the first to go out, uh, out there with original content. And uh, we had a fabulous primetime lineup with all our blockbusters from Choti Sardarni to Barrister Babu and Shakti coming back to the primetime. Uh, and of course, we also had for the first time, Katro Ke Khiladi, the Desi version made in India, which we shot in India as soon as the lockdown opened. And through all of that, uh, the pandemic, with all the challenges, we still managed to put out a fabulous show with Rohit Shetty. Uh, what we also did in the lockdown, uh, you know, was realizing and trying to measure the pulse of the audiences. And we realized that content that was, you know, going to Going to, going to roll out from there on was, was very far more inclusive than it has been. I think it was uh, stories and content that... Uh, Nina, uh, I'll, come, I'll, I'll come to that question. I uh, Actually, that's, a, that's an entire separate question I want to ask you. Okay. But, uh, you know, okay. uh, when we were talking about shoots, I want to understand, has normalcy returned to the production of shows completely? Are you running on uh, your schedules are on schedule now? Like, we'll have the fresh content going all throughout? 
Yeah, so the challenges continue on ground, of course. We do have scheduled shoots going on and we are entertaining our audiences with mm -hmm. all our differentiated content, which is fiction on the on the weekdays and the impact properties with Big Boss and Salman on, on the weekend. So shoots continue, but with great care and great safety for the crew and the cast. And there is very strict SOPs being followed across all shoots to ensure the safety of all our talent, cast and crew. So but yes, shoots pretty are much done. on uh, schedule now. On schedule, absolutely. Of course, I can't. I, I I have to say that it is challenging. It's not been easy, uh, but we are following strict protocols. Uh, strict SOPs have been put into place. We are working in bubbles where you know we ensure that uh, the two bubbles don't interact, and therefore, if one is uh, you know out of action, the other one takes over. So yes. A lot of all of that has happened as an SOP, but yes, shoots have 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 happened, and we are happy to see that Big Boss continues as a live show every single day, 24 by 7. That was the biggest, I think, the most challenging of them all was Big Boss. Yeah. Is it? I thought it would be easier because you any which way put them in a bubble. Yeah, but you know, there's a there is a there is a very large cast and uh, you know and a crew that is working outside the house, okay. which we can't handle, right? Uh, and that crew has to be taken care of because you don't want to, of course, those guys are in the house, but the, the crew outside, which is working day and night, has to be managed with, you know, with really very big, good care. So, you know, both the clusters that you handle are very critical for YCOM 18's top line as well as the bottom line. So, to what extent were the revenues of these two clusters impacted? Well, uh, so I have to say that uh, the quarter one and quarter two were subdued for obvious reasons, uh, you know, there was uh, advertisers who were also managing their own manufacturing, retail, uh, you know, shelves were, uh, were empty. So we did see a very subdued quarter one and quarter two. But what I'm very happy to say is that we came back with a revenge in quarter three. And uh, we had a fabulous quarter three, a very great festive October, November and December. This was despite IPL, you had your viewers. Oh yes, we had our we had our viewers and we had our advertisers, and we are happy to say that we had actually managed seventeen uh, sponsors on Big Boss alone. Yeah. So very happy to know that uh, we had full inventory consumption. We had uh, great sponsorships. We had great partnerships, and uh, we've seen a fabulous quarter three, which is also leading into a, a very robust and positive quarter four as well. So on the whole, I think across all our genres, we are going to see a very healthy uh, H2. Uh, the second half of the year is going to be actually perhaps even slightly more than 20, 2019. So yeah, I see uh, an H2, which is really going to be a very good comeback for all our genres. And a couple of uh, categories that stood out for us in, in that quarter three, uh, from a you know from advertiser genre perspective, and I could call out some of them being uh, you know gaming, uh, edutech for example, uh, e-commerce, e-wallets like phone pay and Amazon Pay, Vedantu, Baiju's, Dream Eleven. So a lot of these genres actually stood out for us. Uh, of course, there was the usual suspects of FMCG uh, uh, there as well, but some of these advertisers also stood out for us and partnered with us and supported us and believed us because I think there is, there is this whole thing about trusting, uh, you know, the part and, and both partners used to trust each other. And I think we've really had a good quarter three and fingers crossed for a fabulous quarter four as well. So, you know, now coming back to what you were telling me then, you know, I just uh, want to uh, want you to elaborate on this. Uh, what have been the content sure. trends in Hindi GEC and kids cluster? So this is this is yeah. across broadcasters, you know, not just YCOM 18, but what have been yeah, the yeah, general trends? Yeah. So uh, one is, of course, the trend uh, that that emerged was that of, mm -hmm. uh, of nostalgia. And that continues to be very honest. And uh, it actually fueled our non prime time growth and uh, we continue to have a very good non prime time with all our library shows ticking in and uh, you know getting audiences in so we do continue to have you know uh, like i said balika vadhu kasam sasural simarka a lot of those shows and i think prime time and, and non prime time both 
have become a trend that that has kept pace. However, of course, non prime time has gone back to its pre COVID levels. But for colors, particularly our non prime time has been uh, very, very good and continues to show us very robust growth. So one, of course, trend was nostalgia. But I think going forward, the trend was about creating content and telling stories that were very, very inclusive. Uh, stories that capture, you know, the, the simplicity of human emotions, uh, stories that help us uh, in family bonding, uh, stories that could bring families together. And I think we've paid, paid special attention in, uh, you know, creating characters that were very, very relevant and relatable. So I think these were the couple of trends on which uh, all of the content is being created and stories are being told. Of course, the, some of these things don't change and at, at the GEC front and particularly from a colors perspective, you know, we stand differentiated as a brand for uh, our very strong fiction stories, which are across genres and very strong, uh, you know, uh, properties which are impact properties which include action and adventure from Khatroke Khiladi, voyeurism with Big Boss. And of course, we'll, we'll soon see quarter four coming up with a new show with Dance Diwani. So a very good mix of fiction and nonfiction. We also saw uh, as the lockdown opened a couple of new show launches, which worked very well for us. And that was Ishq Me Mar Java, a romantic thriller at seven o'clock. It's a slot leader there followed by 7.30, Choti Sardarni, Shakti, Barrister Babu, all great slot leaders and primetime uh, viewership there. We also saw a lot of uh, shows coming in with uh, social commentary, you know, where uh, Colors has been known for tackling social issues that exist in our society today. So we had Molki, which was about bride buying with Balaji. Uh, we had Namak Iska as another show that we launched, which talked about a profession that was really not looked, uh, you know, which is looked down upon. So a lot of new content that we actually launched has also picked up very well for us. And the weekends continue with Nagin, our fantasy show that continues to draw audiences. And of course, Salman is doing his magic. So we are really back with a bang with differentiated content on the weekday and the weekend. So Did that I was a trend that continued from for, from our perspective. The other big trend that I see that will continue is that of the FTA space, where uh, we as an organization went back with, uh, you know, Colors Rishte in the GEC space and Rishte Cineplex in the movie space. And we're really very delighted to be, uh, you know, entertaining newer audiences uh, on, a, on a platform that uh, we had exited a couple of years ago and we've seen huge growth there, very fantastic growth with both the channels actually being at 15%, 14% market share. So that's given us tremendous uh, growth in terms of viewership as well as in terms of ad sales as well, in terms of revenue. So this was again a separate question which you have covered. Uh, from a very larger, uh, sorry, from a very larger perspective, the other trend has been that uh, there was a, a, a you know a impetus of of OTT and we're, we're not we're not shying away from that fact at all. In fact, we believe that uh, we are in a in a in a country unlike the West, where uh, linear television and digital are going to coexist. You know we are we are in an and market, and both are going to grow, and that's a trend that will only take shape further in 2021. But what this really did for us was, and we are very happy that it did that, was it created a huge demand for content. And as content creators, we are very happy that we could, you know, satiate and help, uh, you know, satiate this increased demand of content. But we can also experiment with content because, you know, there was all kind of content today, which is long form, short form, episodic. And as content creators, we are really happy that we are in a space where today we are able Much to make more choices. Content. Yeah, and we are able to make content which is agnostic of pipe or screen. Because today you look at it from a Viacom 18 perspective, 
then all the new IPs and the you know evergreen IPs of Nickelodeon are actually entertaining kids on Woot Kids. You know, seven of the top ten uh, titles on Woot Kids belong to the Nickelodeon IPs. So we are very happy that if kids choose to see us on a, on another screen, then uh, we are we are available there. So can we think of this kind of shift back also like you know there, there are some very popular shows on boot for instance your asur did very well so can we have that Absolutely. running on colors on you know on any of your tv channels are you also looking at that kind of a plan so so that is that is a possibility uh, but uh, i would imagine that uh, the content that is typically viewed on uh, some of the ott platforms is not necessarily uh, very inclusive and meant for families and therefore you would be careful as to what you want to put on your linear television because you know that it's family viewing versus OTT where you know you're, you can restrict the screen either to personal viewing or to viewers who want to just watch. So you have to be a little careful on that front, not, not saying it's not possible to do, but the reverse is very, very true. So for example, Big Boss on Wood Select is doing very, very well for us. And in fact, uh, you know, the Wood Select uh, viewers actually get to see Big Boss and a lot more of Big Boss content around content and Big Boss even before television. So that strategy is working beautifully well for us. Uh, even Nagin continues to do very well for us. Ishme Marjava, a lot of shows that are on colors are doing fantastically well on Wood Select and Wood as for that matter. So. Uh, like I said, as content creators, uh, you know, as a trend going forward, we are very happy to therefore create content that is agnostic of the screen and uh, or the pipe for that matter. And I truly believe that we are going to coexist going forward. So Nina, uh, you also said that there was this shift from prime time. There was no prime time during COVID, you know, because people were consuming TV even in the afternoon or, you know, the, there was complete change in this uh, uh, timeline. So uh, similarly, there was uh, a lot of shift in agnonies into other genres like movies, for instance. Uh, so uh, a lot of uh, data that came out at that point of time showed that movies gained. So do you uh, yes. feel that, you know, there was this uh, shift of, uh, you know, revenue and viewership, everything moving from GEC to movies? So a uh, couple of genres uh, grew, uh, you know, outside of what would you call normal growth. And uh, those genres, can, where you were very right, are movies, news and kids, to my mind, saw phenomenal growth in the, in the lockdown. Uh, as I said, uh, you know, movies is a, is a genre which is all about the titles that you play. And it was about putting out our best foot out there and ensuring that Color Cineplex really Deliver. So yes, we did see very good growth on the Nickelodeon franchise and the Cineplex franchise. And we've in the, you know, under two years, we've actually managed a 7% market share on color Cineplex. So yes, the movie genres did benefit and the kids genre for Viacom also benefited. In fact, we were the least discounted uh, genre and franchise in the lockdown because like I said, we were dishing out original content, new IPs, and we had a full house from an audience perspective. So these two genres did kick in. I have to say, however, that now as the unlock is uh, unraveling, uh, it has gone back to the pre-COVID levels. Okay. However, it continues to be uh, on, on a high because while the total TV you know, grew to at 9% for kids at it's come back to 7%, but since total TV is still, is, is still growing, the number of people on the genre uh, are actually higher than pre-COVID. And kids are still at home and still online. So the kids category is actually has, is still uh, growing over the pre-COVID areas. But I think um, otherwise, uh, normalcy has returned, returned across genres. Coming back to kids, you know, uh, the category uh, saw some new in entrance, you know, uh, we had yes. in media launching a kids channel. So can a ru rupees 500 crore ad market support so many channels? You know, uh, I've always believed that the kids genre is here to stay because uh, it, it, uh, it kind of uh, offers custom made, tailor made content mm -hmm. for kids. And, uh, it continues to enjoy 
you know after general entertainment and movies kids is one of the biggest genres at a 7% uh, at at 2 plus so i think uh, it's a genre that is here to stay for sure and uh, looking at the opportunity we at nickelodeon ourselves actually just before the lockdown made ourselves available in eight languages so we really have all the four south languages and then we have bengali marathi gujarati and hindi so as a franchise there is huge opportunity uh, across and because we straddle all india two plus audiences the opportunity is huge to my mind and i also think that advertisers have come to realize that this is a great opportunity and a platform where they can reach out to their audiences from a family perspective so i think yes there is there is more than enough room and as you can see we are all launching local ips uh, we already have three new local ips in this progress this was my last question uh, this was my second last question in fact i wanted to come to it because we are almost running out of time what are the new ips sure. for hindi and kids cluster that we are going to see in 2020 so, uh, so kids cluster of course will continue to to look at local content uh sorry this is saying uh, i've removed it okay so the kids content uh, continues and we are very happy to say that we are first time uh, in collaboration with viacom international and nick india and nickelodeon international are you know co-producing a show called the twisted timelines by and with sammy and raj and that we are going to launch in 2021 over and above another two local ips and we look for white spaces and look at gaps which are there in the market to ensure that we will we'll cover those white spaces so yes we are looking forward to a couple of local ips in 2021 and make sure that our width and depth of local content continues to grow year after year and look at over 100 over 100 hours of new content from a gc perspective i can promise you that we will continue to create characters and stories that are relatable relevant but I, I think we are also going to look at slightly more disruptive content coming in as well. We are considering new IPs uh, that will look at different uh, storylines, different genres. We've been known to do, uh, you know, is this, romantic. Is this to compete with OTT, or is this? Sorry. Is this also to compete with OTT? No, I think it is to ensure that we stay true to the DNA stands for which is to give differentiated content and a fabulous mix of fiction and non-fiction i think it comes from that perspective i think ott will only supplement what we do uh, we don't really look at them as as competitors like i said we will coexist uh, tv still continues to be the primary screen of the household and family and i think we will continue to be there but this is about being true to our promise of delivering great so content. Do you have more non-fiction shows, fictional shows? Like, what kind of mix are you looking at? So we are looking at making our weekends very, very robust with non-fiction and impact properties. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at bringing new impact properties on mm -hmm. the weekend as well as the year rolls out. We will start off once Big Boss is over with Dance Devani, and we haven't, uh, you know, seen a dance show. Uh, in, in the last, since the lockdown. So we're looking forward to that because we did Khatro Ke Khiladi, we did Big Boss, and now we're going to look forward to Dance Diwani. And post that, we are going to look at some very disruptive new IPs in, uh, from, from an impact property perspective. So yes, we will look at a very, uh, you know, rollicking, uh, robust weekend with new impact properties. And we'll continue to, you know, weave uh, the fabric of the society through our prime time new genres where we look at social commentary, we look at romance, we look at family, we look at very basic, we look at family bonding, we will look at different genres that will continue to entertain. And yes, we will have a very solid 7 to 11 p.m. prime time lineup with fiction shows. Some new fiction shows as well. Yes, of course, we will. We are in, in fact going to launch looking at two new fiction shows uh, in, in quarter four itself. When Big Boss gets over, you will look at uh, two new fiction shows, very different all over again. Uh, shows that are going to be telling very different stories to my mind. They're beautiful shows. I've just had narrations last week and 
They're very, very fab. Sure. I'm sure they'll be really looking forward to that. So, Nina, before we conclude, I would want to understand from you how do you expect financial year 2022 to shape up for broadcasting sector? Because this year, last year has been pretty, you know, uncertain and things did not really turn out the way you would have perhaps wanted them to be. Now, you think we will recover in 2021 or will it stretch to 2022? As somebody who's actually spent 25 years in the industry, what do you think? Where are we as an industry? Uh, see, that's also a, a perspective of what's happening in the economy. And I can see that, uh, you know, the economy is, is starting to pick up. I can see that consumer demand is starting to pick up. The Sensex, Sensex has reached a, a, a peak of sorts. Uh, and I think from, a, from what we see in quarter three and quarter four of this fiscal, I am very hopeful of, uh, of a great 2021. And I do believe that we will go back at least to the FY20 levels, you know, the, the fiscal of FY20, which was last year. And we will go back to that for sure. And uh, of course, it's a matter of time, but looking at how the two quarters of this fiscal have been, I'm very confident that we will come back with a very robust top line and we will continue to deliver a very robust bottom line as well. Uh, so this is which, for the uh, industry or this is only for Y Committee? I think even from an industry perspective, see the industry uh, will, will take a little bit of time because other than television, the other media platforms are, are still recovering and are, are on a very slow recovery path, if I were to call it so. Uh, you know, particularly from the theater's perspective or on-ground perspective, print, uh, radio, everything is, uh, you know, facing a slightly more slower recovery than television is. But television and digital, I think, are galloping. And we will look at, uh, we will see a, a good, robust comeback on those two platforms for sure. The other uh, platforms, of course, will take some time to recover. But uh, I think recovery is here. A lot of our advertisers have shown a whole lot of growth in the couple of quarters. If you look at some of the results of the FMCG companies have also talked about how their sales have grown over the previous year. So it looks very positive. And we as an organization are committed to continue our investments in content. We are storytellers at the heart of what we do. And we will continue to invest and entertain our viewers and make sure that we are also in the business of business at the end of the day, and we will ensure good top lines and bottom lines for our organization. Nina, thank you so much for speaking to us, and uh, you, we wish you all the best. We wish that you meet your goals uh, much before then. You know, you've you've actually planned or uh, you know have thought of. So thank uh, you, Nazia. I think uh, you know. Just as a last note, I would say that there are a couple of. Uh, you know, things that stood out for us in, in the year. Uh, that is of resilience. And I, I think that will continue with us uh, for a long time. And that resilience will, will take us to where we want to go. It has taught us to embrace disruption. And it has embraced, and we have, it has taught us to think innovatively and out of the box. So I think resilience is one. And the second one that, to my mind, is that of gratitude. I think we cannot be more blessed and we have to be really grateful for the, the so little thing. Twenty twenty. Granted, yeah. No, we just we just took so much for granted. Yeah. And we have to you know get into the next year with a whole lot of gratitude and resilience. Yeah. And so I think those for all a couple of, of attributes will pay off. Yes, I think it's for all of us individually, professionally, personally, and as organizations. Thank you, Nina. Thanks for talking to us. And uh, we you, hope uh, we get uh, to speak to you more often in uh, going forward now. Will do. It's a <laughs> promise I will try to keep. Yeah. Take Thank care. you. Thank you, Take Nina. Take care of yourself. Stay safe. And uh, be fit in mind, body, and soul. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you.